On May 20th, 2023, Greece's culture ministry announced the restitution of a trove of looted art. A total of 351 objects were to be returned to the country. They had previously belonged to the disgraced former art dealer, Robin Symes. Among them is a bronze sculpture depicting the ancient Macedonian ruler, Alexander the Great. The piece is so spectacular that it seemed destined to go on display at the Acropolis. But there's a problem. Archaeologists think it's a fake. Archaeologist Stefan Lehmann has spent the last 20 years researching fake antiquities. We first met him in 2015, when he was still working at the University of Halle in Germany. Here, he was just finalizing a catalog listing suspicious bronzes for publication. The artworks had come from auction houses, galleries, and art dealers. Many had been laundered onto the market by Robin Symes. The art dealer authorities also seized the Alexander bust from. Lehmann believes the bronzes are forgeries, the works of an expert forger or forgers known in art circles as the Spanish master. Their identity remains a mystery to this day. The Spanish master often makes bronzes of ancient rulers like Emperor Augustus, their faces are covered in a convincing patina and so well preserved, it's almost a miracle. Spanish master is just a makeshift name. No one knows who they are or where they're from. It's a name I've heard a lot in the art trade. This one was in a Bonhams auction. This head came from Robin Symes and was on sale in New York in the December auction. That was sold over the counter in a New York antique store. That one was in a Munich auction. In 2015, Lehmann was a professor at the University of Halle and also keeping a close eye on antiquities that came onto the market, each listed for a considerable sum. Prices start at around a million. Lehmann's research often took him to Switzerland, an important center of art trade. The city of Basel was then home to Christoph Leon, an art dealer and archaeologist with over 40 years of experience, who had sold many antiquities to international museums. In 2015, Leon decided to do something unusual for an art dealer. He opened up to us about what he was seeing at international auctions. Only a few of these pieces are genuine. Let's go through them quickly. This is a fake. See how blurry it is? No sculptor in antiquity worked like that. And no figure from antiquity looked like that. With those big bulging eyes, it's a joke. Also look at the hair. The hair always gives it away. Those vases are okay. But this is so fake it stinks. There's no way. It's all fake. These here too. None of these are antiquities. Here's another, with the organ bulging through the cloth. That was never done in ancient times. They've all been sold, the few genuine ones and all the fakes. $47,000, $83,000, $59,000, that's big money. Everyone keeps their mouth shut. Nobody says, hey, watch out, buddy. What you have there is a disaster. You've squandered your money. Uh, 
I've always tried to abide by certain rules in my work. I didn't do all the things other people in my field were doing because I knew that at some point it would blow up in my face. I'm no saint, but I always kept to limits I'd set because I came from another side, from academia. In those days, Leon was visiting European museums to see collections live with his expert eye. When new, suspicious ancient pieces appeared, he discussed the issue with Stefan Lehmann. This is the last video we have of Christoph Leon. He died unexpectedly in 2017. New York's art market was also under scrutiny at that time. Archaeologist Oscar White Muscarella had tracked how dealers pushed their fakes onto the market. According to him, they were using galleries, art fairs, and above all, auctions. We met Muscarella in 2015 in his Manhattan apartment. He had been a curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for many years and was known for his expertise as well as his honesty. He openly criticized the art trade and was seen as a kind of whistleblower. By one of my mentors here, Sherlock Holmes, I have learned that both dealers and collectors will send things to auction houses because they're forgeries. I talked to a dealer about this once and he smiled and what they're doing, you see, instead of selling it to a customer from their own shop, they don't want to sell for it. We don't want to sell for it. And a lot of dealers don't want, don't want to sell for it. They put it up for auction under a false name or they'll say from an old collection, when it says the, the provenance, from an old family collection or from an old collection or, or from Monsieur X. And these are dealers who are selling the forgery in auction and not being personally involved in who buys it, you see. In America, because it has so many museums, is a prime target for the sale of forgeries, yes. The bronze bust of Alexander the Great also came from the New York art market, from the gallery of dealer Robin Symes. Stefan Lehmann first saw it in the year 2000, not in New York, but in the town of Stendal in eastern Germany. It was exhibited at the Winkelmann Museum, without information on where it had come from. Lehmann asked the museum about its provenance, but got no answers. He concluded the piece was illegitimate, either because it was looted art or because it was a fake. I was there and took a look, and to me it just screamed forgery. I was quite astonished, so I bought the catalogue and found that even less convincing. But then I more or less forgot it again. I mean, there are many forgeries, and even the best of us can fall for a fake. It can happen at the highest levels. There's nothing more to say. So I published the lecture that I gave here in Halle in the form of a museum booklet, and I said that in my opinion, there's no way that the piece in question is from the ancient world. Antike Bronze Plastik Alexanders des Großen oder gut gemachte Fälschung einer internationalen Kunsthändlermafia. Nun, vor zehn Jahren jedenfalls galt diese Plastik noch als Sensation, ausgestellt im Winkelmann Museum als Leihgabe eines Privatsammlers, wie es hieß. Doch fast so alt sind auch die Fälschungsvorwürfe. 
Also ich bin nach wie vor der Meinung, und ich habe das wissenschaftlich äh, publiziert, dass es sich hierbei um eine Fälschung handelt. Eine Verleumdung, sagt nun die Winkelmann-Gesellschaft und zog vor Gericht. Gelehrten Streit oder Archäologieskandal, nun ein jahrelanger Prozess um diese Frage soll vermieden werden. Ein Vermittler wurde eingeschaltet. Eins ist aber schon auf der Strecke geblieben. Die vermeintliche Bronzesensation ist seit der Ausstellung vor zehn Jahren verschollen. Es ist ja nicht nur der Kopf, sondern es ist not ja just the head. It's practically a bust. So much more has been preserved. In the year 2000, prices were already quite high. I'd say an original piece like this, an Alexander in bronze, would have gone for between 15 and 25 million. Easily. Aber mit links. By displaying the bronze of Alexander, the museum gave it legitimacy, even though it was acquired through a dealer and there was no documentation about its provenance. Lehmann felt the museum was allowing itself to be used as a kind of money laundry for art. To go down the legal route and sue me, that was something new, I must say. And in a certain way, it's a form of violence. That was also the intention. The lawyer for the plaintiff told me that the aim was to have me removed from my post. In archaeological circles, forgery is an unpopular topic. But after the trial, word got around that Lehmann was addressing the issue publicly and a Swiss collector who wished to remain anonymous sent Lehmann a bronze head to investigate. The collector had bought the piece in New York in 1993 and had doubts about whether it was genuine. The portrait is of Emperor Augustus. Being able to examine it was a rare opportunity for Lehmann and his colleague, fellow archaeologist Henrik Lühr. By sending the work to Lehmann, instead of selling it on to someone else, the Swiss collector risked losing a lot of money. Impressive piece. If genuine, the head would be worth a good million. If fake, it'd be worth little more than the material, perhaps 500 euros. It's certainly very impressive. The first thing you say when you see it is that it's a wonderful head. And it's special because there are very few bronze heads of Augustus, which would increase its value. That explains why forgeries are made, you see. And forgeries are, are sold all over the place, you see. Uh, and because they're, 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 there's a market for it, because museums and collectors buy it. We're talking money, money, money is the underlining factor in the reason this is done, because only rich people have the money to pay for it. Uh, and these rich people take, get further advantage by donating it, taking a tax deduction so and getting prestige. You see. And this goes on and on and on. As we're sitting here, it exists at this very moment. Lehmann suspected that the Spanish master could have made the bronze head. His research also provides insight into the forger's market strategies. The Spanish master's forgery workshop thinks about which objects it will produce for the market. In the ranking of archaeological artifacts, bronze sculptures are number one. They're very special pieces, and so you'd expect them to attract a lot of attention. He has a grumpy expression, not the ideal we'd imagine for Augustus. You can tell the artist is playing with emotions. It's a fantastic piece. In the vaults of the university in Halle, 
there's a collection of plaster casts of original antiquities. These correspond exactly to the genuine ancient portraits. Lehmann compared the bronze head from Switzerland with this genuine likeness of Emperor Augustus. Archaeologists call this method stylistic analysis. It's a centuries-old approach used to identify genuine works of art simply by looking at them. It takes decades of experience, a wealth of knowledge, and intuition. You can see here what an official portrait of Augustus looks like. The eyes aren't very arched, they just have a slight curve. The nose is long, and the mouth is oriented towards the vertical axis. The facial expression is very calm, with only slightly raised contours. There's only very light modeling, which conveys a calm, timeless face. And then we have the jagged edge at the bottom. Hardly bent at all, but allegedly torn off with great force. Looking at these details, you begin to doubt whether it is a fake. It's been made perfectly. It's masterly. But Stefan Lehmann's archaeological expertise told him that the head was a fake. And having the object in hand meant he could have the material of a suspected Spanish master forgery analyzed for the very first time. The Fraunhofer Institute in Fürth specializes in carrying out computer tomography, or CT scans. Usually the scientists here test industrial products. The disputed Alexander bust couldn't be analyzed during the trial because it went missing following the exhibition. Here's our patient, ready for his scan. Let's go. But now, physicist and material scientist Harald Müller will examine another suspected forgery, the head of Augustus. This hall is essentially one giant CT scanner, one of the most powerful in the world. They scan the head. The radiation levels are extremely high, so the scientists leave the hall and seal the doors. The analysis focuses on the bronze alloy to see if it has the characteristics of bronze created 2,000 years ago. But even if it does, forgers are believed to melt down ancient coins and use the metal to make new heads. Acceleration voltage? Nine electron volts. Nine EV. Which device? This is a... It's a Perkin Elmer detector with 200 micrometer pixel pitch. A range of the material characteristics correspond with antiquity. So we believe that this sculpture is made of genuine ancient material. You could find ancient metal to use for this. And using old materials for forgeries isn't an entirely new idea. Here's a hole. You can see it here, but you wouldn't be able to through the crust. The hole's been chiseled out in a structured way. Something was slotted in. 
Yes, you can see the edges of the inserted piece. And this material has a different density to the material surrounding it, which has a different alloy composition. We've carried out metallographic tests on a cross-section of the material and the outer crust. For one thing, we determine that the corrosion, which looks very bad to the naked eye, is only on the surface. That leads us to conclude that this artifact was created in modern times and designed to look very old. The test showed the bronze sculpture of Augustus to be a fake. At the time, Stefan Lehmann had uncovered 35 bronze works suspected to be forgeries, and that number was likely to rise. The Spanish master's workshop divides the labor. I could be wrong, there could be more, but I suspect that there are one, two or three people who get together and say, what are we going to do next? Take this exceptional bronze portrait of a black African woman. You have to come up with the idea first. Then you have to make the molds, cast the metal, and then begin ruining it. So making those damage marks and the verdigris to make it look ancient. All of that requires a lot of skill. Museums are obviously never happy when someone calls important pieces from their major collections into question. That usually also leads to interpersonal problems. That can't be avoided. But I think the question of whether these are original ancient works or modern forgeries is serious enough that you have to look past things like that. As a professor at the University of Halle, Stefan Lehmann was in a position to be able to freely designate expensive artworks as worthless fakes. Of course, the practice didn't make him many friends in the art trade or at the museums that were affected. His book about the Spanish master's forgeries was published in 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, welcome to this book launch at the Martin Luther University's Archaeological Museum. I believe scholars must respond to these challenges quickly, clearly and effectively. Only then can we defend the foundations of our discipline from this money-grabbing attack. To this day, it's still not clear who the Spanish master is. The person or people behind the forgeries are likely still working in secret, smuggling fakes onto the international art market. Stefan Lehmann has now retired. We caught up with him again in the city of Cologne. He still spends time on the topic of forgeries. Ever since his book was published, Fellow experts from all over the world have sent him images of suspicious bronzes. Lehmann says that the Spanish master is, slowly but surely, distorting our image of antiquity. The Alexander bust from the Winkelmann Museum in Stenda, which landed him in court in 2010, had remained missing until 2023. At the end of May, I got a newspaper clipping with a photo from a Greek colleague. All he wrote was, can it really be? I looked at the picture and saw a box. 
And in that box was the Alexander from Stendal. The article said the piece was from the Geneva art collection of the criminal art dealer Robin Symes. I think that collection was discovered in 2006. There was a legal dispute involving Italy and Greece. And then the antiquities were returned to Italy and also to Greece as looted art. Among the things returned was the Alexander from Stendal, so it's now resurfaced. Greece's culture ministry published the list of 351 antiquities restored to the country from the collection of Robin Symes. Number 11 is the Alexander bust. A court has now ruled that it was looted art. Stendhal shouldn't have exhibited it without documentation about its origin, just as Lehmann said in 2000. Lehmann still believes the bronze is a forgery. He's pleased it's turned up and hopes the material will be analyzed. It's a great outcome. Bad would have been if we'd found out the head had been melted down. Or if a naive American multi-billionaire had bought it, even if that would have been a sensation. But to have it returned to a country, that's spectacular. I won't do anything. The piece is so prestigious, it has such a smell on it, that people will get in touch. It's unlikely the authorities in Athens don't know that the Alexander bronze from Robin Symes collection is suspected of being a fake. After all, Greece's culture minister has a doctorate in archaeology herself. It's now up to Greek authorities to make the next move and disclose to the world the provenance of the Alexander Bronze. <laughs>